Saturday afternoon in October last year. The residents of this commune in northern New South Wales are getting ready for a party. They're going to share a meal, enjoy live music, and by doing so, raise money to send one of them to Lebanon. I want to see my daughter, and I want to see her now, and I've already been way too patient and way too persevering in this, and I, that's, that's why I must go to Lebanon again. That's why I can't rest in my beautiful life here, because I need to see her, and I believe she needs to see me, and that's all. <laughs> Angela Earth admits she's been naive. Three years ago, she allowed her former partner to take their two-year-old daughter to Lebanon on a holiday. The pair never returned. Angela has been fighting to get her daughter back ever since. Angela's daughter, Nabella, two years old when she was abducted, is now nearly six. Her father is Sayed Rida, an Australian citizen who migrated from Lebanon when he was 15. When Sayed and Angela met, he was working as a massage therapist, thoroughly enjoying an alternative lifestyle. He didn't appear to be tied to his family in Lebanon, nor to his Shia Muslim heritage. That changed shortly after Nabella was born. When she was three months old, his father died, and just a phone call in the night, and quickly he moved over to Lebanon to go to the funeral. Uh, he was gone for about three and a half, four months, and when he came back from that, from that time, his focus was, was on getting money and returning, saying that his mother was quite old. It would be heartbreaking for him if Nabella didn't get to meet either of her grandparents or his parents. Yes. For two years, Angela resisted Sayed's request to take Nabella to Lebanon. During that time, she and Sayed separated, but his request never waned. Finally, Sayed promised to stay for two weeks only, and he purchased return tickets. Angela felt the trip was inevitable. It was a sooner or later. It wasn't a yes or a no as to whether or not Nabella could go to Lebanon. This was her father, this was his homeland, this was his family, and of course he had the right to take her there, and of course she had the right to meet them. I wish that she could be older, but I understood his concern that the mother might not be there. So it was logical. I just went logical with it, and my heart just prayed that things were going to be all right. But it wasn't all right. Nabella didn't return. Angela will leave for Lebanon in a week's time, her fourth trip since the abduction. In previous trips, she fought for custody of Nabella. And she is the first Australian mother to win custody from a Lebanese court. Sayed appealed the court's decision and Angela won the appeal too. Sayed was ordered to hand over his daughter. Instead, he took Nabella into hiding. An Australian mother has issued an impassioned plea for help to find her daughter, who she believes is in Lebanon. When Angela discovered Sayed had disappeared, she went to the Lebanese media. She told them there was an arrest warrant out on Sayed, but he could not be found. So it brings me to this point here, when I need to ask all of you, anyone who hears this story, anyone who sees my child, who knows where she is or how she is, if you could please telephone this number. No one came forward, and after months of living in Lebanon, Angela ran out of money. She was forced to continue her fight from home. Leads us to Nabella. You will be well rewarded financially. A hundred percent, you're wrong, hundred percent. 
Australia's Muslim leader, Sheikh El Hilali, supports Angela's fight. He's labelled Sayed's actions as inhumane and he's called on him to obey the Lebanese courts. I just remember how much she loves swimming and I could just see her swimming around here and really, you know, having a nice time and I mean a platypus, where else can she see a platypus? Angela has two other children from a previous relationship. Zia, her elder daughter, yeah. will follow her mother to Lebanon in a month's time. Together, they hope to find Sayyid and convince him that this is where Nabella should grow up. If that doesn't happen, Angela is prepared for drastic action. Oh, I'll come with you next time. If it can't be done that way, I'm at the point of snatching her back. And that's taken me three years to get to that because I don't agree with re-abduction. But you, are, you have come to the point where you are prepared to do it because I can find no other way. What right do you have to subject Nabella to a re-abduction if it comes to that? Because I believe that what this life can offer here is worth that. Are you and your mum doing this for yourselves? Are you doing it to ease your personal pain? I've thought about it a lot. Keep going, finish it off. Or are you doing it for Nabella? Well, being honest, I think that we want to see her, we want to be with her as part of it, but it's, that's not why we're doing it. That's not why I'm doing it. I can't speak for anyone else, I can speak for myself. I want to go over there and bring Novella back because I think that she would have a better life here than she would in Lebanon. I think that she would have more choices, more chance at happiness, more freedom. She can choose the man she wants to marry. She can choose her religion. She can choose the school she wants to go to, the language she speaks, the places she lives, the kids she plays with. She has choices. She doesn't have to run, she doesn't have to hide, she doesn't have to be someone else, somewhere else. Are you lumping Lebanon into a stereotypical box here? How do you know that that is Nabella's life? I don't, that's why I'm going over there. I want to see what it's like over there, but I do know them, her father. I do know what he's like, and I've had reports that she's been moved every three months. I've had reports that he's changed her name. I've had reports that she doesn't speak English anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, you have not checked in for this A week has passed since the fundraiser in northern New South Wales. Angela's family has come to Sydney Airport to see her off. Angela tells them she's confident this time she's going to bring Nabella back. Three weeks later, Angela walks along Beirut's waterfront district. Young girls Nabella's age are everywhere. Angela is worried about her daughter's well-being. You know, I, I hate the thought that she's living in hiding on the run, some sort of fugitive because her father's a fugitive. That is a really scary thing for me. I really long to see her, like more than I can say. In three weeks, Angela has learnt a lot. She had suspected, but now she knows, that Sayid is living in a suburb of Beirut called Hataherek. It's in an area of the city controlled by the Hezbollah, and that explains why the police can't and won't find Sayid. 
The Chief Prosecutor, Mr Radoom, has said that it's clear to him and the police officers working on the case that Said Reader is inside a Hezbollah area, he's been protected by them and that he's not able to to uh, have, you know, risk his officers in a way by going into that area that he's sorry but he can't assist. This is Hatta Herek on one of the holiest days of the year for Shia Muslims. And hidden somewhere in this Hezbollah stronghold is Nabella. <laughs> Hezbollah, a religious army committed to fighting Israel, is a law unto itself in Lebanon. Its leaders deny Sayyid Reader is being protected, yet they have no intention of handing him over to the police. And Hezbollah is a force the Lebanese police don't dare confront. Coming from Australia, that's pretty an incredible thing that the, the chief prosecutor would, is, is, you know, it's, it's a really high position. You can't get any higher than this in the police force. It says, oh, oh, gee, sorry, he's there, we can't get him. They know where he is and they can't get him. Incredible. Frustrated, Angela is looking for Sayed herself. She's helped by Diana, a local woman. Together, they spend days driving around suburbs close to Hatta Herek. They ask if anyone knows of Said Rida, but no one does. They check schools, just in case Nabella is enrolled. Hi, please. You're learning English sometimes? But she's not here. Look, the truth is that the success rate of getting a child back is not very high. Um, success usually comes from the parents making a private agreement over access, custody, return to Australia, sharing the child. Um, but uh, often when the cases are, have come to us, of course that process has broken down and it's it's difficult to re-establish it. Good morning Ambassador. Good morning. Good morning. Angela's come in again. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you again. Take a seat please. Thank you. So I understand from uh, Margaret you've got some news for me. The missing man has been located. That's true. Yeah, in fact, he's had two meetings. A few days later, Angela meets with Stephanie Schwabsky, Australia's ambassador to Lebanon. Angela tells her that Sayyid has surfaced. He's met with Sheikh Mushek, the Hezbollah leader in charge of the suburb Hatta Herek. Um, Said saying that I, he's open to me seeing Nabella, but only after the arrest warrants are removed from him. The embassy sees lots of these cases. But this is the only case in which a Lebanese court has awarded custody to an Australian mother. Despite such legal clarity, there is little the embassy can do. We can't, of course, um, simply go and get children, give them back to the Australian parent and have them leave the country. That's, that's not a possibility. Now, can your lawyer speak directly? All Ambassador Schwabsky can do is exert pressure on the Lebanese authorities to enforce their own court rulings. But that hasn't gotten Nabella back. So it's not my... I don't have... Looking at it from our perspective, it's a very clear question. The court, the state must uphold the authorities of the court. The realities in Lebanon are, are rather more difficult. And we have to work within those realities to achieve the most positive result for Angela. A month has passed since Angela left Australia. Today, her elder daughter Zia is flying out to join her. 
I get to do something I've been wanting to do for a very long time now. I get to help out in a physical way instead of just praying and waiting. Zia is optimistic and she has good reason to be. Three weeks after landing in Lebanon, she sees her sister. Oh, beautiful. Look at that one. Oh, that's a really happy, beautiful photo. That's beautiful. The meeting took place at the end of Ramadan. Angela and Zia arranged to spend time with Sayyid's extended family. Like Angela, Sayyid's family hadn't seen him or Nabella for years. But when Angela arrived, Sayyid was there. He was saying that um, he'd taken a real risk to, to do this, that uh, it was a step forward in faith that we could find some solution, that if anything was planned that would undermine that or jeopardise his safety, then we could be assured that, that, that we would never see Novella again and he could do this and he would do this. Glad you Angela and Zia spent five hours with Nabella. She was happiest when playing with other children. Otherwise, she clung silently to her father. Angela says it was clear Sayyid had told Nabella to be wary of her mother. It was quite clear when we were around Nabella that, that she had a fair degree of fear that if she got to know me, and be open to me, then she would, would lose her father, like the two of them would be separated. Nabella did not speak English, but as her mother and sister played with her, they felt some connection was made. As Mum said when we sang Waltz and Matilda, it was a really magical moment because it felt like then she opened up a little bit. She listened. She almost wanted to be part of it mm. and that was really special and she's really not ready for that just yet angela and zia made a decision that day it was not the right time to subject nabella to a frightening and confusing re-abduction i think it needs to go down in my life as one of the most courageous moments ever to say goodbye and trust that I could see her again. But well, there was nothing else if I, if I, you know, to being a loving mother to Nabella, that was the only, the only thing to do. Ten days later, Angela's patience is rewarded. The Hezbollah sends word that it's told Sayyid to leave Hatta Harek. And with Sayyid no longer under Hezbollah protection, the way is free for police to find and arrest him. Angela dares to hope that this trip to Lebanon may be her last. Three months later, Angela returns, and once again, she's without Nabella. As it turns out, the Hezbollah has lied, and Sayyid is still sheltering in its area. The Lebanese police have finally begun to search for Nabella inside Hezbollah areas. But Angela just can't afford to stay any longer. What assurances do you have, though, that the search will continue now that you're back here? I think that, that we've built up quite a momentum. There's never been a search of this level before. Never has there been so many people involved or educated or reminded that this is going on now and this needs to be solved. Um, and that's what we achieved in this, in this time. In a few days, Angela and Zia will head home to northern New South Wales. There, they'll begin a new campaign of fundraising so they can return to Lebanon and keep up the pressure on the authorities. They ask that the Australian government do the same. She has a right to know us and that's being denied and that's what I'm fighting for. As long as we all stay alive, there's hope. <laughs>